Go ahead and tickle the way with this one. Okay, what up, everybody? It's your boy, J.R.M. Music. It's my J.D. It's my Josh. Damn it. Fucking boss. This is your wife. You remember one watch out? I'm here with the cream of the crop. The legend himself. Fucks the night. My good friend. What up? Uh, we're doing a review of the Assassin's Creed movie. Yes. Also known as the Shocker. Um, Fucks the night. I heard you understood. I have a mind that you didn't watch it today. Yes, I watched it last night, and, uh, you know, I've had the movie for probably two years now on Blu-ray. I picked it up on Black Friday. Oh, I don't know, like, yeah, probably two years ago. I got it for, like, five bucks. I was like, yeah, I was totally going to watch this. And then I shelved it. But seeing as I had a lot of free time on quarantine, I was like, let's watch it, because I know you've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed. I've also been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed. I've actually played through the first four games in my, during my quarantine. A little before, but still. Point is, I'm on Assassin's Creed number three now, so... So yeah, we watched this movie, which... For starters, I want to say, the movie was not bad. I know it got a lot of hate. It did. Uh, this time, instead of following Desmond Miles, we're following Calvin something. They just kept calling him Cal for short. Cal Lynch. There you go. Yeah, it was Cal Lynch. Um, and Cal Lynch, same deal, is in the hands of Abstergo and being placed in the Animus to relive his ancestors' memories through a DNA Aguilar sequence. Or yeah, Aguilar, that was correct. Which, I like the name for the assassin, I thought it was interesting. Plot is like any other Assassin's Creed game, in and out of the Animus a couple times. Learn a little bit more about themselves, the bleeding effect happens, and then it's off through the apple. Here's my biggest complaint, and I'm sure you can agree with me, or feel free to interject. We start the movie off and the time period of which Aguilar exists. And the first thing they do is they cut off his finger, which is fine. That was around the time that we had got double blades from Leonardo da Vinci in Italy. But still. Actually, there is a problem with that, and I have a problem with it. Yeah. See, actually, no, I don't pretend to be, I do. The fact is that originally, I'll take care of the good of the Change the design after you became the Grandmaster of the Assassin Order when he was an old man. Exactly. Making sure that you didn't have to cut off your finger. Yeah. That's why the SEO, SEO's family never did it. That's why anyone after that. But the funny thing about that in that situation is the Assassins in Spain didn't care. They wanted to be like old school. He quoted the game the rules. So yeah, because I didn't get that, because he had two blades, but he was only missing the one finger, and originally, you lose the finger, because that's your ring finger, and the blade comes through there, because that's your marriage to the creed. That was the yeah. original idea. This gives you away. you're walking around, and unless you got a very unfortunate accident, you're an assassin, that's how we know. So, yeah, I... I, I, also know from the origins, no I, haven't, I haven't played it yet, so don't spoil it. Okay, well, I'm just... I won't try to spoil it, but like, there's a scene where you get the hidden blade, and it kind of shows that you can use the hidden blade without cutting off your finger. I don't get why they did that if the blades were still on like a flex mechanism where they came out yeah. that way. That was bothersome to me, but whatever. Moving on, the animus. And I, I get it, I know, no one wants to watch a dude lay on a table with a visor over his face for half a movie. That's why yeah. we had the, he was running around in parkour and shit, but it's just like, I didn't like that Bill of the Animus. I really didn't. Uh, I, I think the Animus is like prototype one. I think it was jank. <laughs> Another uh, thing is, why, why did he need the one. blades while running around in there, you know? That's why the prototype one, because in, the, in all Animus, like, that we know of, the thing will be translated, like, we would be seeing Spanish, we'd be seeing, like, English. Yeah. Which I didn't mind. That, I didn't mind the, the language at the time. No, I didn't mind it either. My last funny fact: I took my grandparents to see this, and my uh, my uh, brother and sister, and they both said, "Why do you have to be in Spanish?" And I, I don't know. I mean, because the Amish like wrote that one. That's a good way to look at it. My next complaint here is that it just feels so rushed. You know, we we only go in the Animus two or three times, and granted, they're big sequences, but it's just like. I don't feel like... I feel like a TV show would have been a better adaptation for this. For yeah, starters. I agree. And here's my biggest, like, what the fuck, dude? So, it's actually supposedly going to be one. I have heard that, yes. but So the shows are rated M for mature. 17 and up. Blood. Sexual themes. Murder. This movie was rated T for teen. The amount of blood? Yeah. Small. Dude, it's murder. Straight up. You were slicing throats and stabbing people. The amount of blood we didn't see... 
that really disappointed me. And the apple to me was kind of unsatisfactory. You know? Yeah, the apple was too small to be the apple that we'd seen. And again, it was its own branch and stuff. And you know, again, like it was interesting. I definitely like like the the order of assassins that they kind of ganged up towards that final scene. But one, the smoke bombs went way too long. I know, right? Those smoke bombs, smoke bombs in the game last for about, and I will just correct and say ten seconds, maybe twenty. Yeah. When you upgrade your shit. And I don't like how many people die. I feel like it's a waste of potential why they were killing off all those assassins. I get it, I do, but still, it's just like, eh. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like they tried. I did some research after this. Nobody, and I mean nobody who worked on this film, had played the game. So, not enough source material right there. That big fuck-up one. Overall, you know, I, I hate the most that they left it open. And I get it. I definitely understand. You want to continue. You want to make sequels. It, Ubisoft wants to make bank. It makes sense. There's an Assassin's Creed game every year. This came out at like the pinnacle of the hype. But no. You don't leave it open like that. And then just be like, oh, by the way, we didn't make shit at the box office. For starters, this came out when Rogue One came out. What were you thinking? Yeah. Dude, it's Star Wars. I don't even like Star Wars. I can tell you that was a bad idea. <laughs> So just a, a jangle tower of fucking idiotic decisions have built us up to the fuckery of what this movie became. Yeah. But the plot was overall interesting. We learned a bit about his backstory and why his mom was murdered, which... <sighs> Did you... You only saw it in theaters, right? I saw it in theaters and I saw it out on DVD. So have you watched the bonus content, the deleted scenes? Yes. Thoughts on the scrap storyline? Did you watch those? Not much. I, I don't remember them. Alright, so let me write it back for you. I watched the deleted scenes last night, just interested to see, you know, what could be different. When he has his run-in where we recommend the chicken and he gets the steak, he, like, looks around at all the assassins after Aguilar walks past him, and, like, each of them is, like, they look like a character from the game. You know, uh, the dude who got murdered in the, the Animus room, he got stabbed here first. That was Arno. The Chinese chick, she was the one from that Assassin's Creed in China. I know, 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 I know. Because if you watch the ending of the game, if you watch the ending scene, you see, uh, what's it called? All the other, like, I have to take those assassins. Yeah. I saw Edward, I saw Connor, I saw Ezio, and you see Arno. The dude who walks up and goes, here, this is yours, and gives him the apple, that was Yusuf from Revelations. Like, yeah. that right there, why they cut that, I don't understand, because that, that was great. That right there was like, that is the fan service I'm looking for. And then there was this whole scrapped plot where there was like this 13-year-old girl, which I get it, you know, it's like, hey, he's 40, this feels kind of pedo, but she was an assassin as well. She had bloodline ties, and essentially him and her escaped, and like, they had multiple scenes where like, she was like, guiding him in ways, and like, she had drawn hidden blade schematics, and that's helped him build it and all that shit. It was really interesting how they just cut her out, and I get why, because again, Test Audience is like, is he boning a 13-year-old? Yeah. But still... That plot was more interesting than what this was. And the whole... He got the assassin's, like, speech through the animus from his mom? No. Oh, cool. And the cutscenes? I hated that. And the cutscenes, though? The assassins in the room give him the speech. The black dude. The Chinese, the Chinese lady. The, the yeah. Arno-looking mofo. And his dad also had a bigger role. Like, in a deleted scene, his dad breaks into a weapons room. And I think this is DLC for Unity, because I didn't play it. There's, like, a gun that's also an axe... He takes, like, this the musket. The gun. He gets that out of the room, blows up a fountain in the Animus room, and starts fighting with it before he gets wrecked. To me, yeah, that was great. A, a weapon, that's all I gotta say. Yeah, but they, they got rid of it. Like, it's just like, they had... It's like they had somebody who knew about video games who was like, yeah, do this, this, and that. And they're like, you know what? Fuck you, Chad. Get out of here. We're here to make money. <laughs> this cocaine, it's not going up your nose. Get the fuck out. And that's exactly what Hollywood did. <laughs> And then the Assassin's Creed's like, wait, no, stop. And it got bent over a table and fucking fisted viciously. That's what they did in this fucking movie. <laughs> Hollywood, what are you doing? Like, why? God damn it. It had so much potential. And they really tried, and they still fucked it up. I'm a little mad about that. The movie had a linear plot that was easy enough to follow, but if you didn't know shit about the games, if I showed my grandparents this, they would just be like... Funny enough, can I tell you a story, though? Yeah, go ahead. So my grandfather, at the time I was seeing this movie, he was six, he was seventy-two, I think, seventy-three. And I, after I watched the movie, 
we were in Illinois for a little bit, right? A couple days, a couple like months later, and I had brought my Xbox One with me with UD and Black Flag in it. And I was playing it one morning. My grandpa sits down and we'll sit in the Westport. I play. Nice. I sent it to a grandpa and play UD, and I watched it. Also, fun fact, uh, I still actually help Aguilar for a little bit. Really? Okay. Yeah. There's like a, a breach between Brotherhood and um, there when he goes to uh, Spain to help uh, Aguilar and the other assassins. Nice. You know, that's another thing. I felt like we could have definitely got a cool game out of this, but whatever. Yeah. And- Right now. One second. <laughs> oh, look at him. Nice. Edward's blade. Uh, yeah. Well, it's also Ian's blade, but I made an altercation to make it more like all Edward's blade. Where the hell did you get Altair's blade? 31 days Halloween. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Modern day assassin there. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh, why don't we talk about ratings? We talked about some of the good and some of the bad. The visual effects weren't bad. The Animus 0.1 wasn't terrible. But again, it could have been better. So Josh, if you're going to rate this... Say, I would give it a... For the movie it was, for what we got, I had to give it a D. It wasn't that bad. It did, like, the fact that it has no sequel kind of sucks. Yeah. The fact that there were some like, continuity problems were like... Like you said, there's a lot more stuff that was taken out that they probably should have been in. Also, good question. Yeah. The scene where um the the woman who's running the program is being taken out forcibly out of the, the animus room. Yeah, Doctor Riken. Yeah, Doctor Riken's daughter. Um, I have a feeling the reason why she's like begging to stay is because one of the assassins you see might be her mom. No, because the assassins killed her mom. If anything, I thought she was going to turn out to be, like, Templar-turned-assassin. But I don't know. Well, yeah, there's a moment where there's a girl that, like, you can see as a girl. Or a woman, like, in a white, on a white hood. Yeah. Like, in a white hood, not, like, the... And, like, when it looks when it's when, uh... Uh, what's her name? Right? It sees it, her. She's, like, like, shocked. Well, yeah, that was that was his mom, and that's because that wasn't in the DNA sequence. That was like it doing its own thing. Yeah. Which again, they could have done better. So anyway, um, yeah, if I was gonna rate this film, I'd probably go with a six. It wasn't terrible, but there was so much room for improvement, and there was so much cut that it's just like, why? You cut some of the best parts, you dumbasses. So. Facts, facts, man. We get to seven between the two of us. That's not bad, actually. So, you know, eh, seven's not terrible. It got a C. Some of the Assassin's Creed games are C. From a lot of the lists I watched, and I haven't played the newer generation yet, I'm working my way towards it. A lot of people hate everything after Black Flag, so. You know. I honestly, I'm the opposite. I hate everything after Odyssey. So just Valhalla. <laughs> yeah, basically. Well, honestly, I, just, I don't like Odyssey either. But I give it a pass. That's why I guess when I might do my rating, I guess see. Yeah. Because I like assassins. I like uh, ancient Greece. I like the, the um, what's it called? The idea of um, them being in ancient Greece. You know, they were fighting the ancient Greek gods and stuff. Certain things. Yeah. And I just love this one anime. And um, thing it threw in. So you know, they can board ships in the, the black and the ancient Greece one. Really? Yeah, our own ship and I didn't know that I haven't played it. What's your favorite Assassin's Creed then? Why don't we just end with that? Uh, Black Flag. Black Flag's a good one. Black is probably the second one. I haven't played the newer ones. I really enjoyed Black Flag. Of course, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood I think was like the greatest one. Uh, but I'm enjoying three. So, I think out of all of them, I just my most disliked Assassin's Creed is Revelations. I know that's the end of Ezio's Esther- Esther- story, but my god, it's boring. Oh, true end of the story is Emperors. Assassin's Creed Emperors. That's a movie, right? It's a like, short anime, um, animated film they made where Sean Jones introduced 
the Chinese assassin. Oh, ah, okay. He actually was trained by Ezio. Nice. Yeah, for a little bit. And this was actually just how he dies. Uh, that's the Emperor's. Well, I mean, he dropped his blades in Revelations, marking the end of his journey. Yeah. Alright then, so, any closing statements for our fans here? Great to be back to a video of you and class, and um, that's it. Uh, thank you all for watching, man. Alright. I uh, look forward to many more fun collabs from our podcasts. Multiple, I said yes, podcasts. Yeah. To our own personal channels. So who God knows what. Look forward to many more cool projects and, uh, with that being said, remember everybody, nothing is true and everything is permitted. We're committed. And we work in the dark to serve the light. We are assassins.